back to Chile Pass where I need a coffee. <laughs> like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go! <laughs> right, we're at Chelsea Test Centre. And what we're doing is we're actually going to look at some crazy turns. There's one turn here where Stiggy, as you can see, no hands driving from myself again. VIP chauffeured around today. Um, we're going to go look at this turn. I actually thought that it was done incorrectly. So even as an experienced driver, a driving instructor, this turn, I, I thought Stig was going to fail for it. But this is what you need to do in order to not fail your driving test. So that about be about maybe seven minutes into the video. So if you want to try and fast forward, I'm just guessing it's going to be about seven minutes. Then you can have a look at that part of the video. Along the way, we're going to be showing you the town centers. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, then go to the channel. Subscribe, ding the bell for uh, future no uh, so yeah, all that good stuff, but you'll see us be a bit more in depth with going in and out of the test center. There I was just talking. If you want to go check out tips and tricks about the test center in more depth, then go and check out the playlist at the channel. You'll be looking for Chelsea driving test routes. Okay, we're here, second exit on the roundabout. Not too busy these roundabouts, which is quite a nice thing about Chertsey. Um, it's quite a free-flowing area like some other test centers around this area, which is very nice. And it's not too populated as well. So less cars on the road, less hazards, less risk of failing your driving test. These are all good notes. So we're approaching a junction here now. We're going to be turning right at this roundabout, which will be the second exit. We went over this in previous videos as well we're not going to count the car sales room here so first exit passed and now this is second exit towards Waybridge we're going to be going towards Chertsey town center now so it's going to be turning left at the traffic lights which is going to take us in towards the town center now uh, town centers usually have lots of pedestrian crossings but another observation that I've had from Chertsey first time I've ever been here today just getting shown the roads and learning this area for myself uh, is that there aren't a lot of zebra crossings or pedestrian crossings Chertsey Town Centre, so turning right, mirrors, mirrors, interior, exterior, depending where you're going, signalling right. Now, Stiggy's actually stopped here and allowed the traffic on the right to proceed because the traffic in front of us has stopped on the roundabout. So if you want to give a gap for other cars to continue to try and get through the roundabout, that's very nice of you. If you do stop on the roundabout, that's also acceptable because once you've actually made your way onto the junction, if the traffic stops, there's not much you can do at that point. So waiting on a roundabout is acceptable. Okay, we're turning right, second exit, interior mirror again, exterior mirror like I mentioned on the last roundabout, signal roughly 10 to 5 car lamps by now if you've been watching the videos you'll know I say 10 to 5 car lamps now if you signal 5 car lamps you cannot go wrong so roughly 5 car lamps is about 20 meters uh, if you're not too sure about distance then when you go for a walk and you see a load of parked cars count 5 of them that's the distance you want to be starting your signal for if you do that for every junction you will not go wrong Okay, so here we are coming through the town centre. We've got a Sainsbury's car park here, which Stig was kind enough to share some information with me. So I can share it to you guys. You can use this Sainsbury's car park to do your bay parking. Now, there is only one way in and one way out. So you've got a nice wide entrance, nice wide exit, but take it nice and slow. At the roundabout, turn right, second exit. So we're checking our mirrors, five to ten car lengths back, signaling five to ten car lengths back slow on the approach coming to a jogging to a walking speed when you're roughly about 10 meters out from the junction jogging speed if you need to start to slow down to walking speed because it's a closed junction that means that the visibility at the junction is impaired then you may need to slow down to walking speed possibly even stopping look at the cyclist is there enough room for us to go around the cyclist yes is there any oncoming or overturning taking traffic no then this is a safe time for you to go now we're coming up to the right turn in question now there are two roads here that you might think on the right if you're going right right then you position in nice and close here
here on the right, literally facing the road straight ahead of you. And this is the road that you need to take. Now, if there's another vehicle in this junction that we've just done with you, you can either wait behind them or alongside them because this road is more directly in front of you. So if you're waiting on the left side, you're actually closer to this vehicle, which can give the traffic behind you some space to try and keep following that main road that we were previously on. Now, having a look at this road, this is a, a typical road that you will get at some point on your driving test. And that means that you've got parked cars on both sides and the examiners are testing you on your ability on meeting situations. We have a stop sign here, mandatory when you reach the end of the road you must stop. Meeting situations are when you have an oncoming vehicle, judge the vehicle by its speed, if it's speeding up you slow down, if they're slowing down you might need to speed up. Now this junction is very difficult to see, you must lean forwards, check around the vehicles that might be stopped here, they must keep that area clear as there is a keep clear area to allow us to actually emerge out. Peep and creep, uh, creep, take your time. We're taking this next road on the right. Okay, so we're going to adjust our position as close to the center line as possible. Line up with the center of the road that we're turning into. And if we need to stop and wait, this is the position that we stop in. We allow the vehicle, oncoming vehicle to pass. When we get a safe opportunity, that's the point where we turn and we can enter into the new road. Now when you're turning into a new road, always look into the new road. So you make sure it's safe for you to actually keep going because sometimes like this road, you're gonna have lots of parked cars and there might be oncoming traffic. So you'll need to slow and stop to allow the traffic to pass for it to be safe for you to continue on. Okay, so we're following the road here from what it looks like. Uh, oh, no, we're at the end of the road. So end of the road, turn left, checking the traffic on the right. Right, left, right is the minimum amount of observations you must do at all junctions. You can look more than this, but you must always double check the right hand side, mainly for motorbikes, but it is the most dangerous side as in the UK we drive on the left. So when you reach a junction, the traffic that's coming from the right is the traffic that's closest to you. And that is the most dangerous side why we check it twice. Okay, so we've got parked car on the left, interior, right mirror check. That's for our change of direction. We keep roughly one meter from the parked vehicles, which means we have to go over the center line. At the end of the road, turn right, mirror, mirror, signal right, 10 to five car lengths away, slowing down to a jogging speed when we reach roughly two car lengths from the junction, to a walking speed if we can't see, stopping if it's necessary, otherwise we proceed with caution, and we try to keep the flow of the vehicle going. That's the idea, guys. We want to keep the main roads flowing as much as we can can do to allow traffic to flow freely which increases road safety. So we're here at the roundabout, we're going to be going straight ahead. If no directions are given on your test, your examiners will want you to follow the road ahead unless road markings or signs state otherwise. This is something that would normally be mentioned to you at the beginning of your exam from your examiner. So we're coming quite close to the end of this route now. We're coming back towards the test center. Um, we're going to be going straight at this traffic light. There is no left hand turns. So you can see that by the traffic light. That's quite nice. Now, looking beyond this traffic light towards the next traffic light, is there any road markings in the road? Can you keep using this lane to keep going straight? So, while you stop at a red traffic light, use that to your advantage to look ahead, try and assess the road, and plan for the junctions beyond the junction you're currently at. There's the left only the arrows which I was looking out for earlier. We are turning left in this roundabout so that is quite convenient and we are putting the signal on as it will benefit other road users regardless of it being a left only lane if you believe the signal is going to be of benefit to anybody including pedestrians and cyclists we do signal to benefit them. This is the way that your examiner will look at your use of signals. Is it beneficial? Is it helping people? If it is then you really need to be using your signals. Okay, we're coming towards the last roundabout, I believe, taking us back towards the driving test center, turning left, first exit, slowing
going down to a jogging speed, checking the traffic, which is the beautiful part about joining a junction or approaching a junction at a slow speed, is it gives you plenty of time to do the observations. As you probably heard me say before, at least 10 years in a row now, the number one reason for failing the driving test, observations at junctions. So if you use the foundations of a slow approaching speed, everything will just gently flow for you. You won't need to think too much. Your anxiety levels will go low and this will make it a lot easier for you to complete mainly roundabouts but all junctions. Checking the traffic here, taking it nice and slow like we mentioned on the other videos, slow on the entry, slow on the exit to your, t uh, to your test centers because you want to take care of anyone that may be coming in or out. It's not a very particularly wide road here, lots of obstructions with the parked cars, so take it slow. Use the advantages that you have, look around, over, under vehicles, through the windscreens to see if there's any vehicles coming out of the test center or this industrial area or the residential roads that we have here as well. We're back at the test center guys. This is where you may be asked to do your reverse bay park, forwards bay park. Um, and usually you will use the forwards bay park at a test center, um, outside the test center and you will use the reverse bay park at your test center. Stay safe, stay tuned. See you.